So you want to be a real estate investor, but where do you start? How do you know what information and sources to trust? That's where I come in. I'm Johnny Catani, and this is the Investor Relations Real Estate Podcast. Hey guys, real quick, before we start, go to investwithkatani.com and download my free ebook, Is Commercial Real Estate Recession Proof? Now to today's show. What's up, guys? Happy Friday. Another week in the books. TGIF, welcome to the Friday follow-up here on the Investor Relations Real Estate Podcast. I am your host, Johnny Catani. And if you're watching on YouTube, you may be like, Johnny, you're wearing the exact same thing you wore in last week's episode. And that's very observant of you. And the reason is because by the time you're listening to this, I will be dancing my butt off at Bonnaroo. And so I'm recording two in a row. Um, and, you know, I was going to change shirts, but then I said, you know what? No, I'm not going to change because honestly, I don't really care. But that's not what this week's Friday follow-up is about. If you listened last week, I teased a story about a deal that went bad. And so... I'm just going to talk about that. It's going to be kind of short and sweet lesson that I learned. So as uh, most of you know, or those that have been paying attention, I was working on a ground up self storage deal here in Utah. Um, And unfortunately, it's looking like that is going to uh, not go through. And by that, I mean, it's not going to happen. Uh, It is unfortunate. Um, So, but uh, it could have been worse. So basically, I'm going to break it down. So I met the business partner. I think I've kind of told this story. So I'll just give the Reader's Digest version. Met this partner at um, Best Ever. A great guy. We're in the, the same mastermind group. He was like, hey, I got this deal. Um, it's land. It's in Tooele, um, you know, which is basically 30 minutes outside of Salt Lake City. Uh, Tooele is up and coming. And so I was like, sweet, I'm in, like, let's do it. So we talked for a little bit at the conference, ended up going and pitching it to one of the, um, to one of the guys at Spartan, um, who, if you guys know Spartan, they are one of the top uh, self-storage operators, uh, at least that I know. I know there's others, but in, in my network, they're one of the top ones. So Pitch it to uh, Ryan, who's their CIO, which is their chief investment officer, basically sees, oversees all of their acquisitions and their acquisition team. And essentially, um, he shut it, like shot it down uh, to, to the extent of what they look for in a deal, right? We're just like, we wouldn't do this deal. So I was like, hey, I'm out. I don't want to do it. Well, a couple months later, I was like, man, I really want to do a deal. Um, I'm going to hit up. Uh, this partner and see if he's still working on this. Turns out he was. Um, He had brought in another partner who was doing the underwriting and already had a self storage portfolio here in Utah. And so I was like, cool, I'm in. Like, yeah, let's do this. Unfortunately, that third partner uh, backed out. He had some personal things come up. And so it was left with the two of us. And between the two of us, we had the exact same skills. So I'm still learning underwriting especially underwriting for self-storage. It's different, especially development underwriting. So many variables. Um, Definitely, it's definitely a lot more intricate. And we did everything we could to try to find someone to underwrite this for us, and we just couldn't. And because of that, the investor that we had, we just had one investor. It was a small raise, 600,000. Because of that, the investor backed out because it didn't seem like we were organized, which to his defense, unfortunately, we we weren't. Um, and so then in, you know, like basically last week, I hit up Spartan and another uh, very well-seasoned operator group and sent all the info to them. They did all the underwriting and basically came back and said they wouldn't do this deal. I was trying to bring them in to save it. Like, You know, we were going to give up the lion's share to them and let them come in and do the deal and and learn. And after they put it through all of their underwriting, they determined it it was no good. And 
that stinks because, um, you know, I put up the earnest money, um, and, uh, and it was hard day one. And we knew that going into it and we did everything we could. And, uh, I'm going to lose that money. And that stinks for sure. Right. Uh, that's definitely a bummer, but what I learned is that it is so, so important to vet your partners. And listen, the there was no malicious intent on the person that I partnered with, right? So certainly you hear of horror stories of people partnering with someone, trusting them, and that person running off with all the money, whatever it may be. This was not the case. We were both trying very hard, but unfortunately, we just didn't have complementary skills. So it's important to recognize what your skills are, right? What your superpower is, what your skill set is, and partner with people who complement that, where, you know, they may, they're ideally not, not the best at what you're best at, and then they're best at what you're not best at. In this case, having someone who was understood everything financially and could do the underwriting, and so we could put together something to present to uh, investors and get the deal done. Ultimately, it sounds like it wasn't as good of a deal as we anticipated anyway. But the point is, is it's very, very important to, um, to, to, to partner with people that compliment you. And I know you guys have heard it from talking to from heard it straight from the mouths of many of my guests, right? Whether it's a horror story, some people found the, their partner first try but you have to compliment each other. And we didn't, and it's unfortunate. And we're gonna lose money, but it made me feel really good talking to Spartan last week. I talked to their CFO, Ben, incredible. One of the most intelligent people I've ever come in contact with. And, um, and I've had him on the pod, that episode will be out later, but you know, um, I'm, I, I lost 12,500 basically is the earnest money. And I told him that, you know, I was like, Ultimately, unfortunately, I have to get kicked in the head sometimes to learn a lesson. And he's like, listen, I've been kicked in the head to the tune of 250000 of my own money and even more than that of Spartan's money. And you guys, this is a two-part story or, or two-lesson story. One is the partner program. Make sure you find a partner that compliments you and also that you are aligned on your goals and what you want to accomplish. Because especially a deal like ground up development, that's going to be at least a five year deal, right? So you need to find someone you're willing to work with for that long. And listen, in the beginning, it, you, it may seem all gung ho. And as long as you are aligned on on doing it correctly, even if you decide you're not a great fit to work together in the future, at least you're aligned on getting the deal done, taking care of your investors, making sure the deal works the way it's supposed to. And uh, nobody loses money, right? That's, you got to make sure you're aligned there, make sure your values are aligned. But the second part, guys, is you cannot be afraid of failure. I talked last week about starting, taking action. The biggest thing is people are so afraid to fail. And I had this conversation the other day with someone. And the biggest thing that I notice is so many people think, that especially because of social media, that's everybody's watching them. Everybody's watching. If I fail, everybody's going to see me fail. You guys have news for you. Not that many people care. Not that, and it's not that they don't care about you. It's just that they have their own lives going on. Sure, they might watch your story and like your Instagram posts. And don't get me wrong, some people are watching and, of course, listening. But in the end, do you really care? Like the, the people that care about you are going to have your back. And if they don't, do you really care about that person? No. So then why do you care if they see you fail? At least you're trying. The only people who are rooting against you are the people who are too afraid to try. That's it. The ones who are rooting against you are the ones who are too afraid to try. They see you trying and they want to see you fail because they don't have the cojones. They don't have they don't have what it takes to try. They can't get over themselves, can't get out of their own head. And you can. And 
being afraid of failure is listen, you got to fail fast, fail fast, fail hard. Boom. I'm on to the next deal. It sucks. It hurts, but I learned a valuable lesson. I'm on to the next deal. You pick yourself up, brush your shoulders off. Got to get that dirt off your shoulders as Jay-Z says, and then you move on to the next deal. And that's it guys. That's all it is, right? It's really just all you're seeing with these operators and these successful business owners is someone who is willing to try, fail, learn a lesson from it and move on and not make that mistake again. That's it guys. That's all it is. And it sounds so simple, but if it was really simple, everybody would do it. So this is kind of, uh, like I said, um, piggybacking off last week's episode. Um, so if you learned anything last week, it's take action this week. Don't be afraid to fail. You guys, it's really, it doesn't, it stings, but you know, I was talking to my life coach, shout out to JD and he asked how business was going. And I told him, I was like, you know, I'm stressed. There's a lot going on, especially with this deal, probably going to fail, but you know what? I actually kind of felt relieved in a way because I was like, wow, that means I'm actually trying and putting myself out there if things are not working. And there's a bit of relief in that when you're, when you're an entrepreneur, because you know, you're trying hard enough. And now the next step is a new problem. As Grant Cardone says, if you've read 10 X is you should continually have new problems, um, new failures. And so I won't make this mistake again. And so from now on, it'll be new mistakes, new failures. And we just keep on going through. So hopefully that helps you guys, um, makes you feel better. Uh, you're not alone. I promise people have had it way worse. You're not going to make a mistake. Nobody's made before. So I promise you're not alone, but keep working hard. Everyone um, do great things uh, and have a great, great weekend. Thank you so much for listening. Don't forget to follow us and subscribe on all of our social media. See you guys. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching today's episode. I hope you really enjoyed it. Listen, I know it's cliche and you hear it all the time, but please don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel so you know when the next video is coming out. Even though this is technically a daily podcast, you know it's coming out the next day. Uh, we have a ton of content coming your way. So please like and subscribe, it helps a ton. Leave comments, we'd love to know what you guys think and uh, we will see you on the next one. Thanks so much.